In this video, I'm gonna talk about my three months of experience with the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro 16, both the Ryzen and the Intel Xeon version, and talk about six reasons of why you may not want to pick up this laptop, though it is still my favorite laptop of 2021 heading into 2022. The first reason is going to be the thermals. On the Ryzen version, I did not see below 90 degrees Celsius for a 4K export out of Premiere Pro on any of the performance settings inside the ProArt Command center. Now keep in mind when I unplugged the laptop, I was able to have substantially cooler thermals and lower fan noise. But during plugged in going full speed, trying to get as much performance out of this laptop, the thermals and the fan noise were quite obvious. However, when I shifted gears towards the Xeon version of the laptop, I had really good thermal experiences, especially in performance mode. I saw much lower temperatures and a quieter fan noise. Now for both of these laptops inside of Photoshop, they perform well on performance mode getting 78 degrees Celsius which for me is a very reasonable temperature for these high performing laptops. Thermals are an issue for you, I would lean you towards the Xeon version of this laptop and even the Intel i7 version, which I will anticipate having lower thermals than the Ryzen 9 5900HX. This has been historically a very hot CPU. And so by going with the Xeon or the core processor from Intel, the Xeon being a little bit more expensive and we'll talk about the pricing in one of the reasons in this video, that would be my pick. The second reason you may not want to consider this laptop is the LED screen, the OLED screen that it comes with. Though this is a fantastic screen with great brightness, color gamut range, and color accuracy, people are concerned with the OLED screen having burn-in. And this personally is not an issue to me and a lot of other creators. I recently talked to Jared's tech and he said OLED really wasn't a concern to him because he's not using the laptop to display like a picture on the wall. He's constantly doing different things within the laptop. Now, another concern of the same picture being presented on the laptop could be the wallpaper screensaver. I've had the same screensaver on my laptop for probably over a year. And if you want to avoid the burn-in fear, I would have your wallpaper set on auto-rotate. But OLED burn-in still seems to be one of the biggest concerns when I talk about these laptops. I'm not personally really concerned about it. I think it would be totally fine. So comment below if that's a concern to you. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that topic. Now, one of the biggest reasons that I would consider avoiding this laptop would be the trackpad and manual click buttons. Because of the ProArt dial, which I think is a fantastic addition to this laptop, and probably one of the most innovative things for creative professionals on a laptop that 2021 brought us, when you combine it with the manual click buttons, it just doesn't have a smooth workflow. A lot of times I felt like when I was using the dial, I had to have my hand in a specific position to then click the left click button rather than having my hand somewhere else on the trackpad and just doing a depression of the trackpad and making a nice solid click like on a standard trackpad from the G15, the M16, etc. I personally think this is not a good trackpad for somebody like a video editor or somebody using Photoshop. However, if you're somebody doing 3D modeling, this has a lot of custom functionality. The center button allows you to pan around objects, over objects. It really gives you a lot of customization on working around the environment of the software, but I didn't find that advantage inside of Premiere Pro or Photoshop. So good on you, Asus, for 3D modelers and this Xeon version of the laptop. Personally, I would have stuck the three manual click buttons on the Xeon version and then gone with the singular trackpad that depresses rather than the click buttons on the other variants of this laptop. The fourth reason I would consider not going with this laptop is if you're looking at the Xeon version of this laptop, it's around $5,000, give or take, when you're watching this video. If you're curious about the exact pricing, you can head down in the description below and click those links. However, if you pivot towards the ProArt Ryzen version, getting it at 32 gigs of RAM with an RTX 3060, you can get this laptop for $2,000, which to me, with the performance that it packs and the innovation that it has with the dial and the keyboard is a fantastic price point. Now, if you wanna up this to an RTX 3070 and 64 gigs of RAM, it's around $2,400, which to me is an incredible price point. Now, one thing that you have to consider as far as the price point is concerned is you could get a Republic of Gamer Strix G15 for around $1,800. You're gonna have an RTX 3070, you're gonna have the Ryzen 9 5900HX, and you're gonna have 16 gigs of RAM. Still fantastic performance. However, you're gonna miss out on the ProArt dial, you're gonna miss out on the super color accurate bright screen that this laptop comes with, and you're gonna miss out on the really sleek stylings of the ProArt itself, which to me, stands out as a creative professional is something that is important to me. The design aesthetic is a very nice touch compared to the very colorful gaming laptop and all the RGB that it comes with. 
Now you may be thinking, Ben, that's a substantial saving. $600 is a lot of money. And couldn't you just go ahead and pick up like a monogram creative council? And you could, but this is an extra gadget to carry along rather than having a complete creator package and efficiency of workflow built into one device, which I find very advantageous for the on-the-go creator. Issue number five, which to me I was surprised by because on the website, they advertise that this is a fingerprint free device. You know, you can have your fingers all over it and you won't see a lot of fingerprints. I, however, have pretty oily hands. And as you can see, this one was clean. I rubbed my hands on it for just a, a minute here or a couple seconds and I've already have fingerprints. However, if you have a microfiber cloth on you, it cleans up very nice and you're on your way with a good clean laptop once again. But I find that this darker color it gets fingerprints quicker. If this was a silver laptop, you probably wouldn't see them at all. And honestly, that's why I think a lot of the Mac products have these lighter colors. So they probably are getting fingerprints, you just can't see them. And the dark color did show off the fingerprints quite a bit. And that could be annoying for some people. Now, the sixth reason that I think this laptop would be a concern for some people is at the price point of $2,400, you're right in line with the MacBook Pro 14. And the battery life on this laptop is good, but it's not great. And it doesn't come with iGPU mode. So what you're seeing here is around $2,400 and you're seeing the entry level MacBook Pro 14 with the M1 Pro for around $2,400. And you can get about 17 hours of battery life with full performance versus the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro 16 with around uh, anywhere from nine to about down to five hours of battery life depending on the task that you are executing with your laptop. And you're not gonna have the full performance of the laptop on battery power. So that's a big issue, and that's one of the leading factors leading people towards the MacBook Pro and maybe away from one of these devices. However, when you get into more complex rendering tasks, this laptop absolutely destroys. The playback has zero drop frames in B-RAW, extremely low drop frames in red footage, something that the MacBook Pro was unable to accomplish. So at the price point, this is a higher performing laptop, but you need to be plugged into power in order to get all that performance. Now, as far as battery life for this unit in general comes, I wish they gave us an IG GPU mode like the Republic of Gamer laptops where you can actually switch off the dedicated GPU which gives you more battery life. So this laptop with an iGPU mode, I could easily see getting 12 plus hours of battery life on productivity tasks. But because the GPU is still kind of running in the background for some tasks, displaying images on the screen, what we see is a diminished battery life. Still great for a 16 inch laptop with a big, bright, color accurate screen, but I think we could get even more potential battery life out of this laptop with an iGPU mode. This is still my favorite laptop of 2021 heading into 2022. It is such a fantastic bang for buck laptop with the dial, the performance, the color accurate screen, the styling and the battery life. It's a great price point for a creator focused laptop that actually has innovations that are built for creators. It's not just a gaming laptop that they threw a color accurate screen on and said, hey look, it's for creators. This was innovated from the ground up for creators and it really proves itself for that use case. If you're ready to make a purchase of this laptop and the concerns that I've mentioned don't concern you, links are in the description below. And of course, likes if this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next episode.